What happens if your prayers right now are the wrong prayers? What happens if right now what you are asking of God is limiting God? Because you're only asking for this much and God said, I've got this much. What happens if, if, if our heart transforms from being centered on us to us becoming centered upon God and we begin to pray, God, do your will in my life. Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are blessed. Well, I'm not in my normal place uh, where we normally record, but the other day when we were ready to get uh, to record, I wasn't terribly well, and so we've come to a different place today. But I think the message, please God, is going to bless you. Have you ever made a decision in your life when you thought you were making the right decision and it turned out in time to be, well, not the best decision. Again, have you ever made the, a decision, you thought it was the very best decision, but only to find out in time, yeah, it really wasn't the best decision. The truth is we're all like that, aren't we? We've all had those moments, you're not alone, when we make decisions in our life and then only to discover that there was a better way. Have you ever made a decision in your life? You think you're making the best decision in your life. You think it's the optimum, the maximum uh, result that you'll bear from it, only to discover that if you'd made a dis another decision, you would have reaped a far ba better and greater reward. You, things would have worked out even better than the, the decision, which is still okay than where you are. Again, you would not be alone. Many of us have made those decisions. Well, when we look at the Bible, when we look at the scriptures, when we think about the kingdom of God, there's a way to help us to make far better decisions to be able to live at a far higher level than the level we live at right now. And it, and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you are God seeks to help you make better decisions than the decisions that you make right now that you could reap even a better reward. You often hear people say, "Well, my life verse out of the Bible," and what they're really saying is my favorite uh, my favorite verse or the verse that really has captured my heart, the verse that kind of summarizes my life. Uh, and, uh, and it's this and, and for me I would say a, a verse that captured me many 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 years ago was from John 10.10 10. I came that you might have life and have it to the full I came that you might have life and have it to the full in other words God wants as far as I believe God calls us all to live a, a, a life and to live a full life an abundant life not to live a life that's less but a life to be all that we can be and for all of us, that's so different to so many of us because of different circumstances, different places, different seasons in our life, different gifts, talents, passions. We're all so different. And so the fullness of life for each of us can be so different. And so there's not a one size fits all. There's not a one size makes people, uh, makes people completely happy. Sometimes we look at the rich, the famous, the powerful, and we think if only we all could have that. And then you meet people, and I used to actually think that, and then I met people and go, oh, that would be the last thing I'd want in my life. I'm far happier doing this or this or this. And so there isn't a one size fits all that causes all of us to be happy. Uh, life is all about decision making, but isn't it? We have to make decisions all the time. And, and being right and making the right decisions dictates our happiness. And or dictates our fulfillment or dictates how we're meant to live. Now, there are some decisions in life that are very easy to make. Then there are some decisions that are very, very difficult, very difficult to make. And then there are some decisions in life when we simply don't know what the right thing to do is. And we get stuck. And it's often in this area where we, where we don't know the right thing to do, where often we sell ourselves short and we end up choosing things that have devastating effects in our life or they, or they fall far short of what they could be. Well, God has, if we think about it, if, if it's true that God made every one of us, if it's true that God wants us to live life to the full, then we could be confident that if it's true that God loves every one of us individually, that it, 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 we, we could say that God has a will for each and every one of us. And discovering that will, if we could discover God, who the scriptures tell us knows everything. So if God has a plan and God who knows everything, if we could discover that plan, 
wouldn't our lives be very, very different? Wouldn't we love differently? Wouldn't we have a different level of peacefulness in our life? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could tap into God's will in our life? Uh, a few, some years ago, my father became very ill very suddenly. And he had, he had sailed as a younger man on merchant ships. And in those days, merchant, he, was in, he worked in the engine room as a chief engineer. And in those rooms, all the piping in the engine rooms were not covered by, uh, were not covered. What they were covered in was asbestos, raw asbestos. And there wasn't a covering on the asbestos. That way it kept the pool, uh, the, the pipes cool. And so in time, the asbestos flaked off and he he breathed in some of these asbestos flakes and uh, many people have died from lung complaints from asbestosis and ultimately that's what would kill my father and I remember one day being at work getting a phone call from my daughter to say hey dad come quick pop who, who my granddaughter used to call him pop you know all of a sudden it's collapsed at home and ambulance is on its way and I remember arriving just as the ambulance would ta was, was taking dad out uh, on the bed with oxygen on and a, few weeks, and a few weeks later, Dad died. He never, ever recovered. But I remember, I remember my, my, uh, one of my brothers coming to me and saying, listen, we've got the best medical attention treating him. We've done everything we can, but you're, you're, you're into this church stuff. We haven't done anything spiritual. Would you know what to do that was spiritual? And, and the whole family gathered. The whole family gathered. They let my dad out for, for one night to see if he could cope, but he couldn't. He had to go back to hospital. And the whole family gathered at our family home on that night, all my four brothers, uh, all, all of the uh, wives, all the grandchildren, the, the immediate family all gathered on that particular night, um, thinking dad might be able to stay home and we might be able to get a bit longer. Uh, and, and, and my brother had said to me a few days before, he said, we've done everything, uh, right medical stuff, not, uh, we haven't done the, anything spiritual, would you know what to do? And I said to him, well, we could pray for him. I said, Rosemary and our five children, we've been going to the hospital and we've been standing around his bed and we've been praying. And, and, and he said, would you do that in front of us? And I said, well, there's nothing to it, really. You just pray and you ask God's will to be done, God, ask God to, to, to work in dad's life. Well, anyway, we all got together on this night and everybody in the room, everybody in the room wanted dad to be healed. Everyone wanted the, in, in the room didn't want dad to die. Everybody in the room wanted dad to get over this. And, and my brother turned to me in front of everybody and he said, hey, everybody, Bruce and Rosemary and the children, they've been going to the hospital and they've been saying these prayers for dad. And, I, and, 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 and I'm not sure what to do, but he does. So he's going to do it now with all of us here. And, and he turned to me and he said, go on, you pray. And... And I remember I looked at the family and just the thought, the thought occurred to me, the Holy Spirit just put this thought in my mind. You all want dad to be healed right now. But what's my will? What's my will right now? What's my perfect will? And I wanted dad to be healed. I loved him. He, he is quite sincerely in my life, the greatest man I've ever met in, in so many ways lived such an amazingly tough life, was so sacrificial for his children. The things he did, I could talk on for many hours. And I wanted him to live. And yet this voice in my head is saying, what's my will? What's my will? What's my will? And I looked up at everybody, very emotional in a room, and, and Dad was there in a wheelchair, oxygen, and, and Dad wasn't fully, you know, uh, uh, understanding or aware of all of the circumstances around him he was just so he was doing it so tough and I said to everybody I said all of us want to pray that dad is healed and I get that but what happens if dad ha that God has another plan maybe we should pray that God's will is done and that's a hard prayer to pray when all you want to pray is live, be healed. When we read the Bible, when we read the Bible, we see that it's very clear that God has a will. And that if we can tap into the will of God, as opposed to our will, 
And I'm not for a minute or a moment suggesting this is easy. But if we could tap into that, how might our lives be different in so many different ways? To give you an example of this, we're going to go and have a look at, at uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. And to give you some context for this uh, passage of Scripture, uh, in, in those days when wars were fought, whoever conquered you would often capture a whole pile of your, more, of, of your people, your leaders, or, or people who were young and fit and capable and would take them off to act uh to to work in the in the government the army to work in in the homes and and to basically be laborers in the in the country that had or the uh, the nation that had captured them the people of israel had been captured many of them had been taken off by king nebuchadnezzar uh, to babylon and they were there and and the people of israel who were in exile from from israel they they, they used to cry out to God, bring us home, bring us home, bring us home. But God had a plan. It just wasn't according to their timetable. And so one day the prophet Jeremiah writes to the people in exile in chapter 29. Look at it on the screen. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests and the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So Jeremiah writes to everybody who's in exile. And if we jump down to verse 4, it says this. He's, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all of the exiles whom I sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat with what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives to your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. And so Jeremiah writes to them in exile and he says, where you are in Babylon, settle down, build homes, get married, have children, be, live life to the full right there. Because people had been sowing this thought in their mind, go home, go home, go home, go back to Jerusalem. But Jeremiah writes and says, no, 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 God's got a different plan. Settle down, stay where you are. Have a look at this in verse 8. And it says, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. In all of our lives, are there not in our lives, in the, are there not in our lives those people who come along when we know the right thing to do and try to throw us off from the right thing to do? They, they deceive us. They throw us away from those things that we're meant to do. And they say, don't do that, do this. And, 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 and we, some, we often have to fight those voices, don't we? And afterwards we stop and go, I knew the right thing to do, but I didn't do it because someone said. And Jeremiah says, I didn't say, God didn't say these things to you. And then in verse 10, and this is what I want to read to you. It says this, for thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed, will I visit you. And I will fulfill to you my uh, promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future and with hope, with hope. See, uh, Jeremiah writes to them, says, settle down. What people are saying to you, the complainers are saying to you, is not what I'm saying to you. Settle down, get married, build homes, have children, you know, contribute to, to, the, to the world there and to, and to Babylon. Build it. And at the right time, I'll bring you home. See, God's plan was that they would be there for 70 years. In a sense, what they had done was they had, they had rebelled against God and he'd punished them by taking them there. And in a sense, as one writer said, they hadn't paid their due or hadn't paid the penalty of it. And that penalty that God had described to them was 70 years. But at the end of 70 years, God had a will and God had a plan. And it was that he would bring them back to Jerusalem. Have a look at this. For, it's, for in verse 11, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. 
plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future and with hope. And then it says, verse 12, then after 70 years at the right time in keeping with my plan, then when you call upon me and, and come and pray to me, I will hear you. And when you search for me, you'll find me. If you seek me with all your heart, there's a condition. At the end of the time of having paid the 70 years, at the end of having, having done that, um, uh, God says, I've got a plan and I'll hear you if you seek me on this one condition with all of your heart. Not just a casual look with all of your heart. In verse 14, and he says, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I've driven you, says the Lord. And I'll bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. What, what Jeremiah is writing to them and saying is this. If you, if you can latch on to God's will, settle down. Be at peace. Increase. Contribute to society where you are. And, and, and at the right time, as you seek me, as you seek me, I'll then, I'll then unveil my plan for you, that I have a plan for you, for your, for, for your benefit, for your welfare. And I will, I will allow you to hear and I will allow you to know. See, many of us, when it comes to decision making, the reason we don't reap the things we could reap in our life is because we make the very best decision for ourselves, but we don't pray a better prayer. God, what's your prayer? What's your will in this circumstance? If we look at the Our Father, Jesus was Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, uh, it's, it says this, Jesus, they, someone once said to him, teach us Jesus how to pray. And he, sa and he says this, he sa Jesus says to them, pray in this way, uh, Our Father in heaven, hallowed or blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has a will. And Jesus doesn't come along and Jesus, when he's teaching people to pray, he doesn't come along and say, well, this is what I want. This is what I want you to do. He says, you know, God, you who are blessed, you who are eternal, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, let, uh, let what you want to be done here on earth be done. And that's the perfect plan. That's the perfect plan. Uh, and, and, and so Jesus' whole ministry life on earth was always, what's the Father want? What's the Father want? What does God want? If I do that, things work out well. If I do that, in the end, we win. If I do that, we prosper. But if at the end, but if the end, all I've done is try to figure out what's the best for me, for my life, for my wife, for my husband, for my children, for my family, for my business, for my circumstance, for my investments, for my study, for my career, for my future. If that's all I do. We can sell ourselves so short. We can sell ourselves so short. And we see this lived right to the very end of Jesus' life. Remember on the, the, the night Jesus was betrayed, he has the Last Supper and then he heads off to Gethsemane. And, and he goes to Gethsemane and, and in Gethsemane, he, in, in the garden, he falls before, before God and he says to God, God, take this from me. Have a, look, have a look at this in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verse 32. Mark 14, verse 32. Then they went, this is Jesus and, and some of the apostles. Then they went uh, to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. There's, there, there, there's a secret in that. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. I'm going on a little farther. What did he go on a little farther to do? To pray. And he threw himself on the ground and he prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Not what I want, but what you want. And he came and he, came and he found the, the apostles sleeping and he said to Peter and Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? 
Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. But the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. What were the same words? Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And once more he came and he found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy and they didn't know what to say to him. And he goes away a third time and he does it a third time. Why? What does he do? He goes to the father and he says, God, what is your will? What is your will? What is your will? In, in my ministry life, I have very often been frightened to pray for things. I've been frightened to pray for buildings. I've been fr- you know, that, that expand us because I've always because I'm frightened that I'll pray too small. I'll pray that, I, that I'm, I'm frightened to pray for proclaiming the gospel, which I feel like God has called me to. I'm frightened to pray how I do that because I always am frightened that I'll pray too small. Because what happens if God wants to do more than what I can imagine? The scripture says that God will do more than we can ask or imagine. And so if I come before God and I'm only ever bringing, God, I want this, God, I want that, God, I want you to do this. What happens if I'm praying the wrong thing? What happens if God's got so much more for me, but I just keep praying, praying these little prayers, which I might think are big. But God's saying that there is even more than we can ask or imagine in our life. See, Mary, we see also, was this person who lived, who lived with this heart that was completely surrendered to God. It's one of the reasons we honour her. We don't worship her. We honour her for the life she lived. When the angel Gabriel turns up to her, she's just a young teenage girl. And the angel Gabriel says, you're the one that's been chosen to be the mother of the Lord. She says, how can this be? I'm, I, I'm, I know not man, as in I'm not sexually active, to be able to be pregnant and, and the angel Gabriel says, well, Holy Spirit will come upon you and, 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 you, and you'll be with child. And when, the, and when Gabriel leaves her, what does she say in Luke chapter 1, verse 38? Look at this. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done with me according to your will, to your word, your will. Then the angel departed from her. According to you, what you, your word, according to what you deem, what God deems to be right for us. What happens if your prayers right now are the wrong prayers? What happens if right now what you are asking of God is limiting God? Because you're only asking for this much and God saying, I've got this much. What happens if, if, if our heart transforms from being centered on us to us becoming centered upon God and we begin to pray, God, do your will in my life. What happens if we, if we, as Paul says, we begin to live these transformed lives where we experience and we encounter the presence, the greatness, the wonder, the beauty, the magnificence of God in our life? But what would happen? I want to give you four steps that you can take, four things that you can do, four activities that you can engage that, that, that will help you to, to live your life In such a manner where you're praying for the best decision in every circumstance. And that best decision is, God, your kingdom come, your will be done. The first is, I have found, is to submit your life and your will to God. Submit submit your life and your will to God. God, here am I. I want what you want in me. And in in other words, God, uh, I come before you and I say to you, look, I don't know how things work out. I don't know how it all comes together, but I want your will in my life. I want your will in my life. Submit your life to God. Say, God, I want you first in my life. The second thing to do, and, and, and in a sense, you'll have already done this, done this in the first one, is to live a life of prayer, is to live a life of prayer. And what do I mean by that? If we read the scriptures, how many times does Jesus go off to pray? And, 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 when, and when he's asked, what are you here for? He says, I've come here to do the will of my father. He says that all the time. I've come to do the will of my father. God has a will. God has a will for your life. God has a will for you, for your family, for the people around you. 
And so, and so Jesus keeps coming back to the Father to connect with the Father so that this will, in a sense, can be downloaded into his, into his mind, into his heart, to his spirit, and into the substance of who he is. It's this download from God that comes in prayer. Because what's prayer? Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is being present to God. Prayer is being transformed by God in our life. And then we take that into our life. We take that into our businesses. We take that into our families. We take that into our study. We take that into our relationships. We take that into the challenges of life. And we, and we, and we, and we, and we see those things in such a way that we experience the presence of God exactly where we are. And so prayer becomes important. Now, if you're not sure how to pray, if you go to this address on the screen, you go to this address on the screen, well, you go to our website, and this address, and if you go to the prayer tab down there, if you're not sure how to pray, you can join me from time to time, and, and, and I'm going to pray. I wrote a book called Personal Prayer, which is all about pray, how to have a personal relationship with God and how to pray to God. And some people say to me, how do you do it? Well, I've decided, why don't I just pray with people? And you can join me for 15 minutes. And then once you've joined me, you never have to do it again. You'll be able to go, oh, okay, that's the way he's suggesting. There are many ways to pray. But it is one way. You can join me at, at this address. Um, number, th number three is this doesn't mean when, we pr when we're facing decisions that uh, we, we, we still we, we make, we just go, God, your will be done, and then we don't make a decision. You, couldn't live li you can't live life. You wouldn't be able to hop in your car and drive. You wouldn't be able to make the everyday decisions you need to make. But you, and so therefore you make the decision in the best way you can. You inform yourself. And you, know, you inform yourself, what does Scripture say? What does the church teach us? What, what is the best knowledge I can gather around the decision that I have to make? You might consult with other people about decisions you have to make. And, and, and then after you've gathered all that information, you make the very best decision, always with this caveat, always with this prayer, God, your will be done. I'm going to accept this job. I've, 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 I've examined it in every way. I think that's what I'm meant to do. God, but your will be done. Make it come about. Prevent it if it's not your will. Make it come about if it's what you want. Prevent it if you So always with this heart disposition of God, I want the fullness of your plan, not my plan. So it doesn't mean that we walk around saying, well, I'm not making a decision. You couldn't live life that way. We, we live life making the best decision we can. And then fourthly, fourthly, and, 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 and it isn't a point and it is the biggest point all at the same time. Do not limit God by your prayer. Do not limit God and your heart. I heard a wonderful story of a of a Christian pastor who was who was uh, uh, wanting to get a building for his the ministry that he was doing, and he and he and he, and he started going out and looking for different places, and and in the end and in the end the long story is is that he had these small places outlined. And they kept falling through. They, you know, other people took the buildings before uh, it happened. They didn't, for various reasons, didn't come about. And then he started praying, Lord, your will be done, whatever it is, whatever you want. He ended up with a building that was twice as big as anything he'd ever looked at for half the price of what he was prepared to pay. See, twice as big, half the price. God has a will. And just like God had a people, a will for the people of Israel, and he honoured it. He brought them back to where they were. So I, I want to suggest, submit your life and, and your will to God. Pray. Then make the very best decision you can based on all the information that you can find. Inform your conscience. Uh, whatever that decision is you have to make. And then don't limit God by your prayer. Uh, say to God, God, you do what you want to do. What would happen if you could have the fullness of God's vision for your life? What would happen if you could have the fullness of God's plan for you? What would happen if that, would, that scripture was true? John 10.10, 10, I came that you might have life and have life to the very full. Well, your life would be so different. Probably just like mine from what God wants. What happens if we made a decision that from today and every day we're going to live that and begin to pray, thy kingdom come in my life and on earth as it is in heaven. Loving Father, we thank you today that you're with us. We pray, Lord God, that you would speak your will and we would be open to your will in our life. 
Forgive us for those times that we choose selfishness. Allow us to be transformed by your will. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of days ago, it was late at night and I was not far away from going to bed, but I wasn't feeling particularly tired and I saw an email come to my phone. And this email was from a woman who lived in another country and she was inquiring, did we still do the prayer and teaching service, which is what we're doing now? Uh, did we do the daily videos and all the other uh, stuff that we do? Were we still making it? Now, when we make new material, uh, we record uh, different, different uh, uh, teaching programs that we do. We, we put them into social media. They go to television programs. But to people who've signed up, so that they're guaranteed of getting it, they get it in an email. And if, you, and if you don't get it in an email, you should go to this address and you can get it too. And, and that way people get the latest material that we've produced. And this lady was inquiring, have you, are you still doing it? And what we've noticed is that sometimes our emails end up in people's junk, junk files or folders or in, the, or in their trash can or their spam. And, uh, and, and they think that we've stopped doing it and stopped sending it, but we are. But on their end, it's in, it's in their computer in the wrong place. Um, and uh, so, uh, so this person was asking that question. So I, I wasn't feeling particularly tired. So I thought, well, I'll ring them. And uh, so I sent them an email and I said, well, if you send me your phone number right now, I'll give you a call. Now, I don't do that all the time, uh, but, I, but I decided I would. Well, a few minutes later, this phone number comes and I ring and there's this married couple who are just purely delightful. To be honest with you, I, 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 I talked to them so much and, uh, and for, uh, for a while. And, and I remember thinking at the time, gee, if we live close by, we could be the best of friends. Uh, they were just delightful to talk to. And uh, it was just a great conversation. And when I eventually got to bed, uh, Rosemary stirred and I said, oh, I've just been talking to these people and uh, that just who wrote to us to tell them, yeah, we're still making all the, 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 we're still here. We haven't gone away. And anyway, a few hours later, I get an email from them and the email says this. Dear Bruce, can't even begin to tell you how much it meant to us to talk to you uh, this morning. I believe with all my heart that God was speaking through you to us. I thought that was speaking, God was speaking to me through them. Uh, we didn't know this morning when we, when we talked to you, but we're in desperate need of prayer now. We learned today that one of our family members has COVID-19 and has exposed our brand new grandbaby at five days old. We're also worried, in fact, all my grandchildren and children have been exposed now. And they went on and they, uh, and, and, they, and they talked about the fact that they were in the age group when they had to be real careful of, being, of, of it being susceptible to it. And, and, and they asked if I would pray and with them and, 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 and they were going to pray, of course. And, 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 and I can't tell you how many emails and conversations I've had with people that are panicked by things that are happening in the world right now. Whether it be whether it be the COVID, um, whether it be the COVID uh, uh, situation or many others, and right into the midst of those circumstances, just like that, you know what's needed more than anything else is the peace of God. What's needed into those situations is the presence of God. What's needed in those situations is is the, for the gospel to be proclaimed. That we keep remembering that God is with us in the midst of the troubles. We have in life. In, in John chapter 16, verse 33, uh, it, it, says, it says in the scriptures that uh, it says in the scriptures, it says, I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I've conquered the world again. I've told you this so that you might have peace in me. I've told you that you have troubles and all that I've told you. Uh, in the world you'll have trouble, but take courage. I've conquered the world. When we are in the midst of facing struggle and difficulty like so many people are right now in their finances, in their relationships, in, 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 their, in their businesses, in their study, right now we need to be proclaiming the gospel that it isn't something we do on Sundays, but that the gospel that Jesus comes into our life exactly where we are here and now. And that's what our ministry does. Our ministry tries to take the message of the gospel and to, and, to, and to communicate it in the best way we can 
in ordinary language, in ordinary images, in ordinary ways, so that people can connect with it. And in the midst of the trouble we face, because Jesus promised us one thing, in life we will have trouble. It's a promise. It's like, it's a statement of fact. In life you will have trouble. And what we need to remember is right in those places that we don't need to fear, we don't need to be full of worry, that doesn't mean we're not concerned, but rather we can stand in the presence of God, knowing that God is with us through the highs and the lows of life. Uh, there are so many people, sadly today, as trouble is striking them in various ways in their life, that they have no faith for their foundation. And so we see marriages coming to an end. We see people turning to addictions uh, when they shouldn't. We see people uh, behaving in ways when, 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 they, when they shouldn't because they don't have the strength, not of religion, not of religion that kind of we say, well, it will give them good values. No, I'm not talking about that. But of a relationship with God where they experience in the power of God in their life. That's what our ministry does. And what I want to ask you today is that if you would stand with us and you would help us to proclaim the gospel almost in a sense into the dark, to help reach people who may not hear the gospel in any other way, but might stumble on it through social media, might stumble on it through a website, through our website, might stumble on it through television and all our programs. That might reach people who maybe at times when we are in the midst of struggle, even if we're people of faith, sometimes we can get rocked by the trouble that comes. And we have to remember again, the gospel changes the world. That's what we're doing. And I'm asking you, would you help us to help people to live great lives, to save people's lives because of what God has done for them? That's what we do. And I'm asking you if you'll stand with me and, if, and, and you'll, you'll pray with us, but you'll also financially give and contribute so that our ministry can continue to proclaim the gospel all over the world. We can't do this without you. I can't do this without you. The world needs Christ today, I think more than ever. And I'm asking you if you'll stand with me and go right now to either this address on the screen or the prayer tab. And together, let's partner. Together, let's pray. Together, let's put our resources together uh, so that we can touch the lives of men and women and bring them to a deeper relationship with God. And so that they would know that God is with them no matter where they are in life and whatever they're going through. So go right now to the, to the Give tab or go to this address on the screen. And I pray that you are blessed as you give, as we together proclaim the gospel all over the world. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph.
kids are good, Jesus. Cause you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, if you believe it, let's sing it. Hey, you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yes, you do, Lord Cause you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good
Loving Father, we thank you that worship is effectively saying your will be done. We want what you want. It's acknowledging you for who you are. And if we acknowledge you for who you are, our heart disposition has to be, Lord, your will be done. Help us to choose your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, the Bible tells us that when we have needs that we should come to our friends, ask them to pray for us. Well, sometimes that's hard. So why don't you write to me on the, on the address on the screen or go to the prayer tab and I would love to pray with you. Also, in the middle of the week, we have our time of prayer where we specifically pray for prayer needs. And you can join in that prayer uh, service as well. And we pray for all these needs that we gather as well. On top of that, if you would like to pray with me, as part of your personal prayer from time to time i'm going to put up just a short video where you can join with me at this address brucedowns.org forward slash pray with bruce and hopefully that will help you in your personal prayer also we're very excited that our new website is up and you can go there and watch all of the content that we produce if you go to this address uh, as well hey i want to thank you for being with us and finally i want to encourage you in your giving the reason that we're able to proclaim the gospel and touch the lives of people all over the world is because so many people are partnering with us so many people are sowing into uh, the vision of proclaiming the gospel and reaching people both who attend church and the many, many, many people that don't. I want to thank everybody who keeps us in their budget and uh, keeps us somewhere between the milk bill and keeps us somewhere between paying for their mobile uh, phone. Hey, thanks, for, thanks a lot. And I pray that as you join with us, it will change people's lives. I can't do it without you. Well, that's it. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are around the world, God is never far from you. The Catholic Prayer and Teaching Service every week is blessing and helping people all over the world. Here's what people are saying. Dear Bruce, all I can say is that this ministry has made and continues to make a huge impact in my faith life. And I have seen miracles happen in my life and those around me as a direct result of your prayers and the united prayers of all in the ministry. Your daily videos have kept me going and kept me praying. And I have again been touched by the Holy Spirit to keep trusting and surrendering to God. Thank you for your work. Join us today and share this week's Catholic prayer and teaching service with others so that they too can be uplifted, motivated, and blessed. Send friends and family to brucedowns.tv. Life will never be the same.